Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the fates of pyruvate. So in the glycolysis pathway, the 6-carbon glucose molecule is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate with three carbons each. Now what will happen to this pyruvate after it has been formed by glycolysis is dependent upon the availability of oxygen inside the cell. Now, if the oxygen is present, it will be get it will be converted into a different type of molecule. If it is absent, then it might get converted into a different molecule. And that is what we are going to discuss in today's class. So now let's see and take an overview of what exactly happens to pyruvate in different conditions. And then we are going to look at each type of fate one by one. So in the, in the presence of oxygen, that is when the oxygen is present in the aerobic conditions, what happens is that this pyruvate enters into the citric acid cycle where it produces more energy. Whereas in case of the absence of oxygen, or you can say when there is non-sufficient amounts of oxygen present, this pyruvate converts into lactate. Also in case of certain yeasts and also in microorganisms, fermentation process can take place where this pyruvate is converted into ethanol. And this also happens under anaerobic conditions. So this was an overview. Now let's see uh, at each of these scenarios one by one. So first let's see the case where aerobic conditions are present, which means that oxygen is available. So in the presence of oxygen, the pyruvate that has been formed by the glycolysis process is further transported into the mitochondria. So this pyruvate gets transported into the mitochondria where it is acted upon by a special kind of multi-enzyme complex, which is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase multi-enzyme complex. Now, this complex is consisting of three enzymes and five coenzymes. So, this complex is responsible for converting this pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, right? And at this step, one molecule of NADH is also being produced. So due to the production of this acetyl-CoA, this acetyl-CoA is now going to get fused with another molecule inside the mitochondria and form citrate. Let me explain it again. So after the formation of pyruvate, this enters into the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, this pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA. And then this acetyl-CoA fuses with another molecule, which is a four carbon molecule, and gets converted into citrate. So this acetyl-CoA is consisting of two carbons. Acetyl-CoA is consisting of four carbons. And when these both fuse with each other, a six carbon molecule citrate is formed. And after this formation of citrate, the further reactions of Krebs cycle take place and a lot of energy is being produced and on different reactions of this pathway. So basically, this is what is happening inside the aerobic conditions uh, when the pyruvate enters into the mitochondria and hence enters into the Krebs cycle. Now, let us see that what happens under the anaerobic conditions. So under the anaerobic conditions, inside the cells such as skeletal muscles, such as skeletal muscles, RBCs or brain cells, so when there is insufficient amount of uh, oxygen present, this pyruvate cannot uh, migrate into the mitochondria, get converted into acetyl-CoA and subsequently enter into the Krebs cycle. So this process is halted in the absence of oxygen or when oxygen is not present. So there is an alternate thing which is happening in these scenarios. So this pyruvate in the absence of oxygen or under anaerobic conditions, is acted upon by an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase and is converted into lactate. And while this process is happening, one NADH molecule is oxidized to NAD positive as well. So this is what happens under anaerobic conditions. Also, in case of certain yeast and uh, microorganisms, the pyruvate so formed after glycolysis is converted into ethanol by a two-step reaction. 
First, this pyruvate is acted upon by an enzyme called pyruvate decarboxylase, where this enzyme is removing the carbon dioxide from the pyruvate. And also, this enzyme requires a coenzyme called thymine pyrophosphate, and it also requires a cofactor, magnesium ion. And subsequently, acetaldehyde is formed. Now, this acetaldehyde is acted upon by another enzyme, alcohol dehydrogenase, and this enzyme converts acetaldehyde eventually into ethanol. And in this reaction, one NADH molecule is oxidized to NAD positive. And this whole process in the bacteria or microorganisms and yeast is known as alcoholic fermentation. So these were the three fates of pyruvate after glycolysis. Thank you.